All right, moving right along with fractions. Uh, a fraction has a numerator and a denominator. The numerator is always on top and the denominator is always at the bottom. And here I have a picture to demonstrate that. So, uh, so the numerator on top and basically this is how a fraction looks. You have a number on top, a dash, and a number on the bottom. Sometimes people write fractions with a slash it's usually a forward slash, I put the call that forward slash. Well, it usually goes this way. Mm. The slash goes from top to bottom, going from right to left, top right to bottom left. So sometimes you see that. And so the numerator again is the top number and the denominator is the bottom number. So when transposing fractions that look like A over B, see the slash there, um, equal to C over D or B or A equal to B C numerators always slide down again when transposing fractions that look like A over B equal to C over D or A equal to B C numerators always slide down and here I drew it out and I'm showing you a slide so everything slides down and across the equal sign whenever you're trying to transpose. While denominator is playing up across the equal sign. So everything happens across equal sign in a diagonal fashion. So numerator slide down and across equal sign while denominators climb up ladders across the equal sign. This is also true once there are no addition or subtraction within the fraction facing off each other. For example, the rules above are not the only ones which would not apply for such a fraction as depicted below if you were solving for A or B. So here you have A plus B in brackets over C equal to D over F. If you had to solve for A or B, First, you would have to carry C up to D because it's in the denominator, so therefore C would have to climb upwards to D. And then you would have A plus B. And to solve for A, then you would have to do what we did earlier. We would have to subtract B from B. And you would have to do it on the same side. And the answer would be A equal to CD over F minus B. After well, you'll be able to do these things in your head. And of course, you know, I'll have a video showing you exactly how to do these, um, solve these equations, these algebraic equations. Now, example one. Look at the following equation. A over B equals to C over D. To solve for A, then B has to claim up the ladder across the equal sign as displayed below. You see that? So here is B because B is a denominator and then you have the equal sign in between here that you can't really see and then the B has to climb up the ladder to C. Great? And so you will end up getting A equals to BC over D. Alright? So now you have solved for A. Now here's example number two, and of course I had to make it smaller script so that everything could fit on the page, and so that you can compare what we are doing to each other. So now we want to solve for A, which is now in the denominator. In the first one, A was, it was the numerator. Now in the second one, A is the denominator. And we have B over A equals to C over D. When what you need to solve for is in the denominator, which in this case is A, then move it into the numerator first, then get rid of all of the other variables which are A, which are C and D in this case. To solve for A, because it is in the denominator, it must climb up the ladder first to become a numerator. So again, if what you're looking for, if there's a variable that you're trying to solve for, and it's in the and it's a it's the denominator. Your first course of action is to move the denominator 
into a numerator area and so we're gonna solve we're gonna move a from bottom to top and since it's in the denominator it has to climb a ladder across the equal sign up to C the a cannot go up up directly above itself the only motions that can happen when you have fractions and you have no additions around or anything is diagonal behaviors You're either going up and across or down and across up and across or down and across okay up and across or down and across it's the same thing for each side so after that you get rid of all of A's friends so yeah C must slide down across the equal sign you see that it must slide down across the equal sign to find its new position on the B then D must climb the ladder to find its new position beside B so here I have it in stages so you want to leave A by itself and A must be in the numerator to have this done don't try to solve anything without moving A into the numerator if it's a denominator so now you see C slides down and across the equal sign and now D climbs up the ladder to meet B to get BD over C equals to A so therefore A is equal to BD over C right and this will come with this you will get this done with a lot of practice and uh, never fear every time you do these things over and over and over again you get better and better at what you're doing so in actuality these are the operations taking place when transposing fractions without addition or subtraction signs example one a over b is equal to c over d if we wanted to solve for a then both sides must be multiplied by b so that a can be by itself so here we have b over 1 times a over b those will cancel out and you have to do the same thing on the next side now this is this is what is actually being done so if anybody asks you why you're doing it then you know anytime something is in the denominator you want to get rid of it you will have to multiply it by itself so since b is in the denominator and you're solving for a so you want to get rid of b it's in the denominator so you have to multiply it by that b if b was in the numerator now like in this case you would have to divide by b or you would add like i would say you you don't have to do that first you remember you have to solve for a so you would have to move a into the numerator and then you would have to get rid of all of its friends so when what you need to solve for is in the denominator then move it into the numerator first then get rid of all other variables around it to solve for a both sides must be multiplied by a okay so again a is in the denominator you have to multiply by a because a is underneath once a is underneath you have to multiply okay and once you do that to one side you have to do it to both sides then both sides must be divided by C because C is in the numerator so once C is in the numerator you have to divide each side by C and then you have to multiply each side by D because again D is in the denominator so you have to get rid of D once it's in the denominator you have to multiply C below and this is just it looks so confusing so I would always tell children to stick with the ladders and the slides or the slides and the ladders because it's much easier it's just that when you need to explain what you're doing you need to know this and of course I'm gonna make a video that corresponds to all of this and me giving you a full explanation so hold tight never fear until we move into exponents that's our next topic after this so hold on look out for the video coming up next all right as promised here i am showing you some examples for transposition in fractions uh yeah so 
these are actual equations used in physics. All of these I'm going to show you tonight are actual equations used in physics. There are algebraic expressions or equations used to represent specific relationships between uh, quantities. So the first one we're going to do is V equals to IR, where we say the voltage or the potential difference is equal to the current times the resistance. So our first task will be to solve for I. So here we have V equals to IR. So note well that all of these things are over 1. You want to solve for i, but i is already in the numerator, so therefore you can leave it there. Since r is in the numerator and it's with i, and we want to make sure that um, i is by itself, we have to get rid of r. And it's in the numerator, so it's going to slide around down underneath v. So it's going to go from the numerator to the denominator. Basically, once in the numerator, you're going to the denominator if you're not being solved for, or if you know, when you want to move around things. And we have no addition or subtraction signs here. This is just clearly um, V, I, and R, I, B multiplied by R. So once you have division and multiplication only in these kinds of equations, you can do this without worrying about anything else. Because something, if you have an addition, you would have to do additional stuff. Right? So here we have V over R will be equal to I. And that is our answer. Now let's try to solve for R. Again, we put them over 1. And we say here that we're solving for R, so R must stay there. We don't touch it since we're solving for R. So we have to get rid of i. And since i is in the numerator, it must move, slide on down diagonally underneath v. So therefore, you would have v over i equals to r. Great? So here we have it. If v is equal to i r, then i would be equal to v over r, and r would be equal to v over i. Great. So now let's move on to um, potential energy. This is the equation for potential energy. So here we have EP equals to MGH. The task one is to solve for M. So if we're solving for M, we have to get rid of its friends. So we're going to just put everything over one. So since G and H are multiplied, it's so basically stuck together, we can move the two of them across equal sign into the denominator because they were in the numerator first. So therefore, EP over GH will be equal to M. See? And then if we were to solve for G, remember G is in the numerator. We're going to put all this over 1. And since G is in the numerator, we leave it. But we have to move M and H. So what we do is take M and move it, slide it down under there, and we'll take H and slide it down as well. So we're left back with EP over MH equals to G. And so that is our, these are our final answers. Turning on over, we have some more equations. We have Potential difference of volts is equal to energy transferred over charge in Coulomb, C-O-U-L-O-M-B-S. And capital C is the, is the symbol for Coulombs. So our task one will be to solve for E. So E is on top. We could put V. Once they have it standing here by itself, we could put it over one. And since E is on top, we leave E there in the numerator and we just move Q. So therefore, V, Q, will be equal to E. Great. And now we want to solve for Q. So we're starting off with Q in the denominator, so therefore we want to move Q up into the numerator because we're looking for Q. So that will give us V, Q equals to E. 
okay but we're still solving for q but now that q is in the numerator we are good it's in a safe zone we just need to move v so to move v v is in the numerator what we're going to do slide it down across the equal sign under e so q is equal to e over v okay so i hope you're working these along with me now here we have the equation for density this symbol is named is am um, called rho so density is equal to mass over volume our task one is to solve for mass so therefore if density is equal to mass over volume we will have to move the volume upwards because it's underneath right so therefore mass would be equal to rho times volume so that will be our equation because mass is already in the numerator and now if you want to solve for volume volume is in the denominator so we're solving for volume we cannot leave it there remember once you're solving for it and it's in the denominator you have to move it into the numerator so rho being over one we're gonna move this climb it up up the ladder by rho so you would have rho v equals to m but we still want v by itself so we put all of this over one and rho since it's in the numerator would slide down on the m so we have volume equal to mass over rho okay so pretty simple when you're just dealing with um division because the fraction sign is actually division sign so what's the thing with division and multiplication because rho v is actually rho times v so once again we don't need those two things in an equation you pretty you, you can just do the slides and the ladders only you don't have to worry about anything else now there are many more similar type algebraic expressions in physics and uh, which you would be introduced to as we move along so don't feel scared and also if you would like I can email you a list of the equations that you could use to for transposing okay so that's a wrap thanks for listening